Hello, Brandon Hutzler again with Movement Restoration. Still got the classroom, still filming some stuff. If you still see me run out of here, it's because somebody found me hijacking this classroom. Um, we're going to get into and talk about how, to, how we correct the hurdle step. If you don't know what HS is, stands for hurdle step. If you don't know what the hurdle step is, you need to go to Functional Movement's website, www.functionalmovement.com. Get some more information on the FMS. Um, that's the language we use when it comes to assessing movement. Today we're going to get into how we fix this pattern, how we fix this strategy, not the why behind it. If you want the why, you're going to have to come and find me in person and talk to me. We got a book out there that covers the why. We go out and we talk several times around the country, um, workshops, conferences, little get together so find us and we'll explain the why um, what I want you to keep in mind this is a starting point this isn't a recipe and unless you absolutely love these drills and it gets 100% of the results you want 100% of the time you're probably gonna need to change them up every now and again and that's okay because each of these interventions that's the least important part of what's going on understanding the results we're getting from the interventions and what those results are going to do to impact the movement strategy we're trying to target is what we want so if you've got drills that get the same results that are different drills and you want to plug them into this knock yourself out completely applaud you for that probably wondering why I've got the one black sock on well, that's because there's a drill that requires one black sock. Can't be a white sock, can't be a gray sock, can't be a striped sock. Got to be a black sock. Um, we'll see that in a second. It's really just to protect my tender toesies when I do this drill. So first we'll get into prone disassociation quadruped mobility. This is another drill that was thrust onto me by Jeff O'Connor. We're going to start out in prone. Got to give him credit or he'll hurt me. We're going to start out in prone. What we're looking to do here is take some tension off the front side of our system. So we could use a couch stretch if we wanted, but what we're wanting is we're wanting full hip extension on one side, uh, systemic extension on one side, and we don't necessarily get that with the couch stretch. If you don't know what the couch stretch is, watch one of my previous videos or look up Kelly Stret, couch stretch. He's the one I borrowed this from. So what we're going to go for here is we want this leg to come up. We're going for full extension on the same side of our bent knee. And then we're just going to reach back and we're grabbing the ankle. Not grabbing the toesies. Not grabbing here. You've got to be able to dissociate enough to grab at the ankle. If you can't, grab a towel, use a towel, jump stretch band, whatever. But we need to get here. This hip has to stay in full extension. Easy way to promote that full extension is to drive that knee up and push that hip down. Let the head relax and then just take some nice, slow, deep diaphragmatic breaths from here. We can dissociate even more. And you can see as I do that, I got a little bit of the shakes going on. Don't know why, just happening. It's because this drill and I don't get along the greatest. And we're gonna work through that. Important part with that, just like some of our other mobility drills, you gotta be able to complete a diaphragmatic breath cycle with it. Don't be holding your breath with that. It won't do you any good, won't get you the results that you're wanting. Half quadruped push pull. Or half a quadruprone push pull. If you want to know what quadruprone is, watch one of the previous videos. But what we're gonna do, we need the kettlebell for this. We're gonna sit up in good quadruped position. We're gonna to go to half quadruped or half quadruprone, promoting full extension here. Got a little bit of flexion on this side. We can even sneak this back to where we're a little bit past 90 on this flexed hip. Full extension here. And we're gonna get into our push-pull series. And now you can see with this, we have a much larger weight shift because we're in a deeper flexed position. And that's okay. That's kind of what we want. What we don't want though is this shoulder to drop. So we're gonna get the weight shift on a fully extended right arm. Keep those shoulders level, and we're going to go through a push-pull. Just like our other push-pull, we can then shift to a side-to-side push-pull. And again, the important part, being able to maintain trunk stability, keep a neutral spine, keep those shoulders still, keep the hips silent. Half kneeling strider. 
This is what the black socks for. So what we're going to do, we're in a half kneeling position. What we're looking for is being able to go here. Now, you might wonder what's so hard about this, but we want full extension on this down leg. And we want to be able to bring this straight forward, not anything here. So what we're looking for is we're looking for stability on this down leg. That ability to push down into the ground, that ability to shift our weight to unload this leg, and the ability to perturbate into pure flexion and extension without having to do anything else. If you have a slide board, works great. I've got a carpet, I've got a sock, little redneck ingenuity making it work. But we're going pure flexion, pure extension, on an extended hip. We can start to work in some upper body stuff, which then ties into some running mechanics and some performance-based drills, but for this, it's a great entry into that drill. Last one is the Captain Morgan stabilization sequence. I used to call this half standing. Apparently that was wrong, and nobody knew what I meant. So I opened it up to my graduate class, and they said, why don't you call that Captain Morgan? Makes me wonder what they're doing on the nights before my test. But Captain Morgan basically is a supported single leg stance. Now I'm not just hanging out here telling you guys a cool story or anything. This isn't what I want. Looks cool, but not the outcome I want. I mean, I want to look cool. I need all the help I can get, but not the outcome on this strategy that I want. So what I want is I want full extension on my right leg. This leg is really just a kickstand. Now you can see these stools are padded, which is great because I can now see what's going on. If I'm leaving a footprint, too much weight. This foot is just resting. It's a kickstand, just a little bit of your weight. And then what we're going to work on is diaphragmatic breathing. We can work on our head position, head control, flexion, extension, rotation, side bend right, side bend left. We can mix in some different perturbations, our weight shifting side to side. You know, we can dissociate, but in all of this, we're wanting extension on this down leg and a light front leg. So from the other side, what that looks like is we're here, full extension, light front leg. We can adjust this height. I happen to have a stool. We can start out a little bit lower and gradually work our way up to where we get closer to that end range supported single leg stance. I just don't have anything that high. So again, starting on the ground, working with some mobility, working our way from the ground up to our functional level of posture, working on generating some stability for this strategy all through that progression. So hope you enjoyed. See you guys later.